Uh, so there is a two-page manual that uh, can be referenced for this. So anyhow, a um, couple things I've read in here, uh, how it works. When energized, the magnetic coil in the clutch pulls the armature onto the contact with the rotor, which is attached to the engine crankshaft. The armature begins to rotate, turning the attached pulley to drive the mower blades. That's pretty much how I understood it. When the voltage is off, the magnet releases the armature, and the armature is pulled against the brake cover by the armature springs. We're going to take a look at those. The pulley is quickly stopped by the brake. The stop, stopping rotation of the mower blades when the machine is new or after the clutch has been replaced it says it needs to be burnished. The way you do that, run at three-quarter throttle and engage the PTO switch approximately 50 times. I've never had to do that. The air gap adjustment is, we'll look at the locations for those. This one calls for 0 0.015 for proper operation. It shows you a picture of it. Uh, you do all three. The adjustments should be done every 500 hours. Uh, I do it if they start slipping. If the air gap is too narrow, the clutch arbiter may, gauge, it may drag, then disengage resulting in premature failure so you you don't want to tighten it down and if it's too wide it will not engage the magnet's not strong enough to overcome the brake spring and we can do some electrical testings it gives us a couple different uh settings to look at so uh so we'll do that so let's uh let's take a look at these okay guys i uh been seeing some stuff on tractor form about electric clutches and I happen to have a couple here so we've got a manual I've got a setup here we're going to look at this guy here so I did know that these also have a brake so basically I've got a device so I can twist it you hear that and I properly adjusted it to point zero one five and you basically adjust this in here and adjust these till it's even all the way around. And yeah, that's a brake. Now, when the uh, when the PTO is off and the engine's running, it's spinning this inner shaft. Okay. And then when you engage the PTO, it engages the uh, the spinning part with the pulley. And that's what spins the deck up. So, right now, I can turn this. But, if I hook a battery to it, it's locked. Okay, that ain't moving. So, yeah. So, that's sort of how it works. Uh, the way I understand it. So yeah, that that's a lot of drag right there. That'll stop the blades on the mower deck Okay, so there's a couple tests in the book. I've got a battery And the first test I want to make sure you guys can see the meter and we'll Get it here Okay so We've got a 12 volt battery. We're going to run it through. My meter set to 20 amps. We'll get it connected here. Sort out a sequence, but when you engage the PTO, I got 3.72 amps. You see that? And as the coil's heating up, it's going to drop down a little bit. So, so that's how many amps the coil pulls. So let me set up and we'll do the resistance. Okay, so the resistance of this particular coil is 3.4, 3.5 ohms. And in the manual, it says, I, I don't know what brand this is, but 2.8 to 3.2 ohms, and you adjust it to 0 0.015 inch on the air gap. So this is a good coil. So it's adjusted properly, and I'm going to put this one back on my storage shelf. So this is my other PTO. 
and it is completely unadjusted so we're going to take this apart just to see how they work uh, first thing i want to do is check the coil i'm pretty sure this one's still good i want to see what the ohms are on it 3.3 ohms so we know the coil is good on that one and we're going to go ahead and take this apart so first thing i need is i need to move you over here a little bit make sure you're still in focus okay so uh yeah i want to take this plate here off This is just a retaining plate. Ah, okay, so here's your magnet. This part hooks to the engine and it'll be spinning all the time. And in here, let me get you over here. We have a friction plate that rides against this. And you'll adjust this down to where you just have drag on it that way it'll stop the mower deck and if you look down in here there's some big springs they're just straight metal springs so when you engage this it actually clamps it tighter to the center part and i believe that's how it works so i'm not an expert on it i just know that um, your coil windings are under this not quite sure how that comes off. Let me look. It's loose, but let's see it from the back side. I just dropped all the springs. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. That's probably pressed in there. So that's the center part's the bearing. I don't see a snap ring on this one. So anyhow, I uh, thought I'd go ahead and since there was some discussion going on about the electric clutch, I thought I'd show you what, what I had and was able to take one apart. I'm sure I can get apart even further than that, but now I'm gonna put this one back together because I believe these two clutches are good, but there is no friction material in here. It's all metal on metal. So I guess once once that metal wears out, it's time to replace it. Okay, this is the one that wasn't adjusted. You can see it's loose, so I got my feeler gauge in here. So now what we're going to do... Alright, that's snugged up right there. Now, I'll do this to the other three si two sides. So on this one... Under here, you can actually see the spring action. And so this wouldn't be rocking when you got the, uh, the engine shaft installed. But uh, I'm still working on getting the adjustment right, but it's tightening up. All right, so I just went around this one. And sometimes you have to go around a couple times to get them to where you're at 0.15 or 0 0.015 so this one has a little bit of braking action but it's I think this one sort of wore out but it's still in my opinion would be usable but uh, yeah definitely if these are I mean you could probably even tighten this up a little bit more to get your braking action back but I wouldn't go too tight because you could burn it up that way but uh, yeah, for, for what I know, these are used, so they're probably got somewhere in them. But that's sort of how they work. And I thought I would go ahead and demonstrate. And I've got this one pretty adjusted up. I do believe when the shaft is in there, it's going to tighten all that up. But uh, yeah, you got to see what, what was in one of these. And basically, you just need a 9 sixteenths and a feeler gauge, and you... Make your adjustments right here around all three slots. 
So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I mean, they're pretty simple devices. And I've got four tractors that use them. So, and I've not had one fail yet. So, yeah. There you go, guys. How a PTO works. Electric PTO. Thanks for watching.